Welcome back. In this video, we're going to paint the pinch pot that we made in our last session. Um, in our last session, we took a pinch pot, a piece of clay, and turned it into a pinch pot, and then we put in um, impressed designs. We drew with um, a popsicle stick, and we put some other impressed designs, and then we attached some pieces of clay. You had the opportunity to kind of design your own thing as long as you used those basic skills, um, and that's what I wanted you to do. Uh, this week what we're going to do is we're going to paint onto the clay with what's called underglaze. And it's called underglaze because it goes underneath clear glaze. So here's your, um, your box with all of your underglazes in them. And you can see that they're labeled. Like this one's called rose, here's violet, um, and I'm going to use this turquoise first. To make sure you uh, have these on there right, make sure that you are unscrewing them. These are actually screw-on lids. So if you get to the point where you're going to start using them, you have to unscrew it, and inside is the color. Now the colors are pretty close to what they end up being afterwards. So you can kind of judge, well, is this the color that I want my pinch pot to be? Um, and then use that. When you're done, you always have to screw the lid back on. If you have any trouble at all, ask me and I will come help unscrew them or screw them back on. What we don't want is some kids try to screw them on and they're in a hurry and they only screw them on halfway and you can kind of see this big gap right here um, where the lid is not screwed on and what happens is if there's a gap there and it tilts over this way it'll start to dribble out into the box and then the box gets all messy and the underglaze gets wasted. So please screw them on so that there's no gap in between the lid and the body of the container. The you can use any of these colors in here except the one called clear glaze. This one here called clear glaze. It's labeled on the side as well, clear glaze. This is for next week when we put the clear, glossy, shiny coat over our pinch pot so that it looks something like this and it's smooth and shiny. Okay, so next week we'll use the clear glaze. Do not use the clear glaze. It looks like pink, but it's not. If you want a pink color, use this rose. Um, it's a little darker than you know you would think of pink, but it does turn into a pretty pink color. So, um, that being said, we'll get started here. Here's my pinch pot, all right? And you should have a little bitty cup of water to wash your brush out in. And you should have um, a big cup of water for your clean water and a little cup or another empty cup for your dirty water. And then you should have a paintbrush, okay? When we paint, um, make sure that your brush is clean. Okay, as I blot it on there, you can see that it's nice and clean. One thing we don't want to do is contaminate our underglazes. So if you take you know, one brush and stick it in here and then stick it into the black and then stick it back in here, it'll start to get contaminated and the, the, the paints won't look nice. So when we're starting here, take your, pinch, or take your pinch pot and paint your pattern so that the painted pattern you know, follows what you've already got. You want to have a nice thick layer of paint so that you've got, um, let me put this out here too for us to look at, um, so that you've got a nice uh, color, if I put it here, here we go, so that it's got a nice patterned color. And you want your, um, you want your uh, underglaze to be nice and thick so that it, it has a good rich color once it gets fired. Okay, um, if you make your color too thin, uh, then it won't come out nicely. Okay, and you can kind of see how I'm actually just brushing right over that impressed texture. Um, we'll get to the point where I'm, I'll put those designs in and, and do those differently to make that pattern look nice. But right now I'm going to start painting in the bottom triangles of my pattern. Okay, and on this one I'm going to use turquoise for the bottom part of those triangles. Okay and I'm going to kind of paint the bottom. And remember you should have your name on. My name is not on the bottom, but yours should be there. If it's not, please ask me to put it on. Once you're done with the color, rinse your brush out really, really well so that there's no paint left on it, no underglaze left on it. And if you have any on the metal part, the ferrule, you can kind of squish that off in your paper towel and then rinse it again. Make sure it's really clean take the lid, screw it back on if nobody else is using it. If you have trouble screwing it on, let me know and I'll, I'll help you. Okay, I'm going to get some blue here for the um, next part. And if it's a little bit discolored on the top or if it's a little chunky, you can take the back of your brush handle and kind of stir it up 
be careful so you don't splash it anywhere. But you can stir it up. If these glaze underglazes sit for a couple days without getting used, um, they do get kind of they kind of thicken up or they change color a little bit. But they get right back to to normal if you just stir them up. So here's my blue. I'm going to paint the blue on, and this blue is a little bit on the watery side, um, but it's going to work. You can just dribble it on, and you can notice how the clay really sucks up the moisture from the underglaze. When it starts to turn a different color, like this part here is lighter than this part, that's because the clay has already sucked up the moisture from the underglaze, and that's going to make um, that. That's how the clay and the paint bond. This paint is different than, let's say, watercolor paint that we use on other projects. It's different from temper paint that we use on other projects because instead of using um, gum arabic or some other kind of um, base medium, they actually use clay and put the pigment, the colored part, into the clay so that um, when it's painted onto clay it actually bonds with the clay surface and becomes part of the pot. So that's how this underglaze is different than say temper paint or oil paints or acrylic paints or watercolor paints. Um, so when I say make sure to use the underglazes, this is what I'm talking about. This is the underglaze. Okay, so there we go got that done and um, I missed a little spot here so I'll go back and clean that up and then I'm gonna switch colors again I'm gonna let that part dry I'm gonna switch colors again wash my brush out really well and dump out my dirty water here so I don't continue to contaminate things And you can always take a little paper towel and wipe that out if it gets dirty on the inside. Okay. Get some nice clean water here for my rinsing. And now I'm going to move on. I'm going to get some green for the top of my pinch pot. And we'll get to the point later where we paint in all the little designs. So you can kind of see right now, I'm doing like a base layer, or a base coat over the top. And you can see how the little dots there I did not paint in, because I'm going to paint those in with a different color later. Okay, so you can kind of see how I'm going around the edge here, around the rim. And I'm actually going to paint in my little ruler texture down here with the green as well. But I'm going to do that after I get the rim done. Okay, now to paint inside of a texture, you want to try to get your brush nice and pointy um, or if you can't use a thick brush to get it done you can go find a thin detail brush and that might suit you a little better if you need a detail brush let me know and basically you just want to kind of poke the tip of it into your shape that you're working with whether it's a ruler shape or a circle shape or whatever and just kind of dip it inside there and try to get it along the edges okay so there's that little shape and get the rest of these and if you make a mistake you can always go back and paint the original color around the edge and be a little more careful but you want to make sure that you get all the clay covered you should have every little bit of clay covered and not have that sticking out as like oh look there's a spot where they didn't paint okay the first thing people see about artwork is sloppiness no matter how awesome your colors are or how wonderful your shape of pinch pot or any other kind of artwork if you do a sloppy job that's the first thing that stands out to people unfortunate but true it is the first thing that stands out people will say oh look at that sloppy paint job and then they won't even look at the pinch pot because they stopped looking once they saw the sloppy paint job so please do a nice job of painting be detailed be careful take your time 
and get all of the edges painted. So there you go, there's my green um, texture all the way around. Now I'll kind of go back and paint the inside. Okay, and when you're painting the inside, let's make it one even color so that as you're using this as a, a vessel, you know, a, a container of some sort, whether you're drinking out of it or holding car keys in it or um, just looking on, looking, sitting on the counter looking nice, the inside is nice and smooth for whoever is using it, okay? Because when we put the clear glaze on, that'll make a nice inside and it'll be easy to wash out um, and easy to clean up whether you know you've got salsa in it or chips in it or something else um, in there that needs to be washed out. It'll be easily wash outable um, and it'll kind of have a nice even color if you keep that inside the same color. Okay, so now that I'm done with the inside we'll go back and we'll paint some of the other textures. Make sure you get all of the clay finished. You want all the clay touched up so it's all colorful and it's not brown somewhere and being kinda you know looking unfinished. All right. Now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna paint in these circles and I'm gonna paint in the lines and paint in the little pointy parts. I'm gonna wash my brush out really well. Both of my brushes actually. Um, and then I'm gonna get some white for the little dots, we're going to paint the dots white. And green is such an incredibly powerful color, I'm going to need to dump out and get some nice clean water here to rinse my brush out again because I don't want to contaminate the white. The white is fairly weak as far as a color goes because it isn't really a color, it's the absence of the colors, right? And so with my white, um, I have to be careful that I don't get that too contaminated. Okay, so here's my white. We'll get the little fresh water in there for later. And we'll paint white into the little tip, into the little tips, tip of white into the circles here. And you can notice this is, is kind of watery. So I'm actually just like dribbling it in there. And then as I turn it, it kind of gets soaked up and dried enough that hopefully it won't run out the back. I guess we'll see once we get to that point. But if I need to, I can go back over it later with a little bit of green and uh, touch up the edges if I need to. And you can see how I'm being really deliberate about painting the patterns and keeping the patterns consistent. We don't want to lose that awesome pattern that you worked on last week and worked so hard to make look nice. We don't want to lose that by doing a sloppy paint job. Okay, so there's my white. Oops, I missed a little bit right here. Uh-oh, and one of them ran. So that'll give me an opportunity to paint green over that later. Gonna wash my brush out. Um, get some yellow for the little spikes. And yellow is one of the worst colors to work with. It gets um, separates out pretty easily and pretty quickly. So really that one you usually always needs to be stirred up and sometimes I need to just give you a whole new bunch of yellow so let me know if your yellow is too separated out paint the little spikes differently here
Okay. Gonna rinse out. I'm gonna get one last color here, black, and get that painted over my lines, and then we'll go back and fix our green, and we'll be done. Okay, here's my black. And for black, I just wanted to go, oh, this one's really thick. Just wanted to paint over my lines here. Kind of enhance those, bring them back out. And remember, you want to paint over all of the raw clay. There should be no brown left. I do have brown paint, but the brown paint looks different than unpainted clay. And I will know if you've used the brown paint or the unpainted clay. Okay, I can tell that. I can tell from looking at it in about two seconds whether you painted it brown or you just didn't paint it at all because you were being lazy. So please, don't be lazy. Be thoughtful, be neat, paint nicely. Okay, so there we go, we got that done. Now, if I wanted to, I could go back with the green and go over those little white dribbles that we had um, to kind of make sure those don't stand out. So basically, if you've got a little spot like this, you can just paint right around it, and it'll go away. And you won't see it. Whatever is on the top will be seen. So then when you go around it, you just have to be a little careful. Okay, just like that. And be careful again. Good. So, there you go, there's your finished pinch pot. When you're done, make sure that all of the lids are screwed on, okay, really nicely. And your glaze box is nicely organized. It should look something like this with all of the lids on. None of them should be laying over, none of them should be tipped over. Put the lid back on so that it snaps so that those handles snap down and then put them on the correct shelf where they belong. So the goals for this is to paint your patterns, make your patterns stand out, have a couple different colors so that you've got variety of color. You've got line, you've got texture, you've got pattern, um, and all of those things should be in your pinch pot. Next week what we'll do is we'll take the clear glaze and glaze over our pinch pot so they're nice and smooth. And that concludes how to paint your pinch pot with underglazes.